Welcome, everybody. I'm Mike Prokopik, Editor-in-Chief of Chief Learning Officer Magazine. It's a pleasure to have you join us today. And it's a genuine pleasure to have uh, my guest for our partner spotlight conversation here, Brent Colescott. Brent is the Senior Director, Business Strategy and Transformation at Sum Total Systems. How are you doing today, Brent? I'm doing well, Mike. Thanks for uh, having this virtual session, I guess. Um, we're in the, the brave new world that we're in. Yeah, with that in mind, just, you know, before we dive into, you know, talking a bit about work and learning and development and talent management and all those good things, how are you doing? Your family uh, doing okay during this uh, sort of unprecedented time? Yeah, we're we're weathering the uh, the current state. Uh, the one thing I've got to make sure that keeps happening is that the pool stays ready to go at all times because a little cabin fever can set in. So as long as you can get out to the backyard and enjoy it, that's the biggest priority right now. Right. Yeah, definitely got to everybody. That's a message for everybody. I think everybody get outside, do what you can to, to stay healthy, stay engaged and and just uh, take care of your, your own health and wellness as well. So absolutely uh, glad to hear that uh, all things considered, things are going well there. So let's let's dive in, Brent, and, and talk a little bit about um, some of what you're seeing in the market. Um, you know, one thing that we've you and I talked a little bit about is that even before what's happened with the COVID-19 uh, crisis and a lot of the, the work from home orders and the, the stoppage in the economy that we're experiencing right now, even before all that, there was a bit of a perfect storm that was hitting HR and L&D and talent organizations. Can you tell us a little bit about what you saw that perfect storm is? And then I want to dive into how what's happening now is either, you know, is making that even uh, a bigger issue. So give us a little bit of background on that HR perfect storm as you see it. Sure. It, it amounts to basically several different areas that have been evolving over the last couple of years, finally starting to hit. Uh, when you look at talent pipelines, I actually kind of juxtapose old pipelines are failing and new pipelines need to be developed. Uh, one of the core pieces that I, I continuously review and look at is what the readiness of college graduates are. And we've seen a lot of uh, kind of hits and cracks in the college model, which is part of that. But then we see automation, turnover of technology so quickly, uh, rapid movement in organizations. And then everything is always now, now, now. But what we've seen is that we still have people sitting on Excel spreadsheets that aren't scalable. We see organizations that don't necessarily understand their succession planning as appropriate because the information siloed. And then when you think about the experience, uh, you know, we see generational shifts and changes. All of these continue to come back to HR and particularly in the talent area when we have such a tight talent pool or we did prior to this, um, everybody who was working was what everybody else wanted. And so the experience, the employee experience was huge. People want to be, you know, for lack of better terminology, entertained in the sense they want those consumer tendencies. And so HR was trying to do so many different things, which means now they're, they're trying to upskill talent that normally came in prepared. And, and this was from CHRO roundtables I've moderated where they basically said the employees coming in don't have some of the base skills. And if those base skills that used to be there are no longer there, HR has to now start training remedial skills. And so it, it's all about HR needs to be more optimized in what they're doing because nothing's being taken off their plate. Compliance, reports, um, talent acquisition, talent management, talent development, that's all still there. But now they're seeing emphasis on some of these talent development opportunities. It's taking away time from them. And, and it just it's converging all at the same time. And then you have automation that plays into the account. Um, what processes can be done with AI? How do you shift personnel? So it was all converging on HR before the COVID-19 problem. And then we had the COVID-19 problem, and now HR is again going to be put into a very difficult situation where we've unfortunately had furloughs, and that's an HR function. Uh, when we do have the return to recovery, we'll see onboarding, again, an HR function. And in the process, everything else that has to be done um, in a maintaining of an operation. So it, it's... I like to say that there was the HR perfect storm and then the asteroid that came right after it. Uh, so I think it's a matter of 
HR needs to be more strategic in what they're doing. They need to be more automated in their processes. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities, I think, coming out of this to revisit process. And that's the one thing I'm, I'm most interested in seeing is now that we've kind of stripped away everything and we're running as lean as we possibly can, what are those processes that organizations were doing pre-COVID that have basically been tossed to the side because they were just excess? Well, are there some examples of ones that I know it's pretty early here, but um, are there examples of processes that you think um, will probably never come back to what they were before? I mean, where do you see the implications of a lot of this uh, immediate situation that we're, we're living in playing out over the long term? Well, I think I, the one thing I see is the remote work is is probably the most obvious example. Uh, the, the interesting point, I heard a couple of conversations. One was executives really didn't buy into the remote work because they didn't really experience it. And when we're seeing what's happening now, everybody's being put in these positions. And the idea of being able to work remotely is now getting a re rethink. The other side impact of that is cost, overhead cost when it comes to these offices. The square footage of leases and such, um, when you start to think about how you run mean and lean, well, suddenly now you can drop the overhead by reducing the actual office space by going remote. So it, it's interesting. It's like everything has a domino theory that I see as we start to look at what was, what is, and what will be, and the dominoes that fall from that. Uh, you know, we've we've seen situations where I'm talking to customers of ours, and just this week I'm seeing progress or not progressive, but um, some of the insurance agencies refunding because cars aren't on the roads. But then you start to do that domino theory: cars aren't on the roads, gas. We know gas is down. We see uh, body shops no longer. You know, how many car accidents happen per week in any one city? Those have not happened, which impact the insurance, but also impacts the suppliers and the parts places. So it's it's kind of interesting to play this domino theory or six degrees of separation. And I see a lot of that happening going into the learning and HR space too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting you, you mentioned sort of the, there's a bit of a democratization of work uh, that happens from a managerial point of view, like, you know, CEOs aren't, aren't, CEOs aren't exempt from work from home rules. Um, right. In fact, they, they're suddenly there. As you mentioned, they're so used to face to face. In fact, they they and many of them uh, thrive on that. Um, now being forced into the situation and say, oh, we're, this is a different environment. You know what? It's not um, it's not ineffective or less effective. It's just different. And that, that will have uh, knock on effects for us. But as you mentioned, the learning and development implications are then, okay, how do we take that and then turn this into something that we can help leaders and managers be more effective at remote leadership, for example, because it's not the same skill set. It requires a bit mm -hmm. different. You know, the fact that you and I are having a conversation uh, via Skype um, is is much different from being able to do that face to face and pick up the cues that 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 you know are just sort of subtle cues that sometimes we were able to um, to just sort of get when we're when we're mm -hmm. together in person. So as you look at learning and development, are there particular areas that you would say folks should invest in? Um, if you because you do have you know there is all of this pressure, there is all of this. Yep. Um, uncertainty that's happening. You can't do everything all at once. But what are some of the core areas that you would say learning and development, talent development folks should focus on in the short term um, to help kind of get us through where we're at with the way we're working? And then, you know, potentially as we come out of this, you mentioned some other areas, but maybe start us with the short term. Sure. I mean, in the short term, I, th I see uh the, the adoption of, of t training and development has been huge. We're seeing an uptick in the tens, you know, 20, 30, 40 uh, percent utilization in our own platforms at Skillsoft and some total. But I'm also hearing from other CLOs that they're seeing upward uh, usage too, up to 40 to 50 percent. Uh, there are other things too, the impact of audiences, uh, making it available to immediate family members is something that a lot are seeing has that reciprocal effect on the internal employee as they share it with their family, uh, how it shows that it goes back up to them. And so we're seeing more and more. The challenge we see with ISDs is they always want instructional designers, always want everything to be perfect. 
uh, I think we're seeing the five day sprint. The time has accelerated to get information out. And I think we're seeing a lot more rapid content development, which is good. Uh, we don't need long segments, and that's been kind of dwindling for many, many years. I think the referenceability is going to be there, um, the applicability of it. But uh, topically, we're seeing where things are changing. All of a sudden, there's new COVID-19 training. There's new business continuity training. So the topics are popping up, and we have to quickly respond to them. So speed is one thing. Uh, the distribution of it, I think virtual you know, the Zoom meetings or Zoom training or virtual instructor-led training is going to continue to take off. In fact, I was on a call the other day where people that have that ability to present well virtually are going to be a, a very strong skill set and in high demand after this point uh, because of that. But then as I look at that domino theory moving forward, um, the one caution I have for all is don't let the good training and development that we're doing for specific uh, business and, and, and productivity and development get lost in the compliance wave that's coming. I do a lot of metaphors, but um, I really do see that much like other events that we've had in our past of a mo much smaller scale, uh, not to, to negate any of the significance of them, but when we think about coming out of this, I see a ton of compliance effort that's going to have to be done. Uh, hygiene training. Uh, I, I even venture to say that from an extended enterprise way, there may be more and more training required for people when they go on site to another location. You know, each individual company is going to have to determine their own comfort level in what their pandemic response is going to be where they're moving forward. And they're going to have to make sure that people that come in are going to be, you know, from not employees are going to have some sort of compliance to that as well. So much like going to an oil and gas campus I've done in the past, I had to take a safety training course online before I could present that to the guard. I see, you know, 30 second videos that someone has to take before they go into a grocery store to make sure they're pro practicing proper social distancing or some sort of acknowledgement. But I just I see a lot more of the regulatory, the compliance, and the extended enterprise space um, really expanding after this event when we do finally determine what the return is. Yeah, and what role do you think technology can play there? Because I think that's you know as you mentioned that is going to be a huge issue as we go back to more work. The, the issue of compliance and making sure that people are ready to go back to work. Um, how can technology help with that? Because it's you know. It, it's not just an e-learning sometimes that you're looking for right. and some of these issues you're looking for something a little bit more more engaging more more um, uh, effective and perhaps in some cases where, where do you see the technology playing a role to help there well i see the technology being you know like kiosks ipads you know you're gonna before you even enter in you might be in a vestibule where you have to take a quick 30 second and acknowledge it and that's where we're going to see data capture and storage take off because if if we make sure that before I go into the grocery store I take on that kiosk uh, you know and I, I either punch in a code that I've gotten because I took the original training or I have to take it for the first time it's 30 seconds here's where you stand relative to the cashier when you're checking out here's where you practice space here's the new lane system of where we go through the grocery store it's going to get captured. It's going to be mobile in some aspects because you're going to have these tablets everywhere. But it's it's all going to be this this presentation capture of data, and you know again going back to the remote side of it uh, with the the Zoom meetings and the WebExes, everything is just going to continue to hammer the internet, which we're going to have to make sure we throw a ton more servers on there because I think we've all seen delays in our in our meetings. Some people have gotten to the, the video and, and cut the video just to make sure that they're not taking up too much. So I just see technology being part of that enablement of knowledge to, con con to keep us safe. Yeah, absolutely. I want to come back to something I think you mentioned um, uh, a little bit earlier when you, when you were talking about sort of the role that talent development and learning and training can play with folk with with employees families because i think that is something we're all feeling right now is stress anxiety um 
you know, there's going to be some some level of, of trauma that people are going mm-hmm. through. Maybe, it, you know, it could be physical trauma if they or family members are actually going through, um, you know, uh, the treatment because of, of the pandemic. Um, but it's also, you know, stress and trauma from uncertainty of their jobs and, uh, and you know, being cut back and furloughs, furloughed and, you mm-hmm. know, put into, put into those difficult situations. What is the role that do you believe talent development organizations can play in that area? Is there, a, can they step up in, in certain ways to help in, with, with that in the short term, but also as we go back to work? Oh, absolutely. I, I think there's a whole wellness component that's going to come out of this. Uh, we're going to be looking at a lot more mindfulness of where people are in terms of their engagement, how they're taking breaks. Uh, you know, I see wellness training, as, as I see it for many years, was a cost efficiency piece for organizations because if you made sure that your employees were healthy and all the great, you know, the insurance policies were down, your costs were down. Uh, this is now moving to where wellness is going to be a mission critical component for the organization because because of the widespread nature of of this pandemic and everyone carrying some sort of burden, uh, whether it's as you said extended family members uh, or the individual, I think we're going to have to be more mindful of how we're presenting training to help people cope, to help people understand that it's okay to to take a moment. It's okay to maybe have this day or such um, that you need to take to recoup. So I think there's going to be a lot more attention to wellness as a part of training and development um, as that talent development component. And this, again, as we said before, with the HR perfect storm, uh, COVID-19, I would say, was the asteroid that kind of came in and then wellness uh, and, and wellness capabilities is going to be another front riding right behind it. So we really have to make sure one even that we're we're kind of flipping the script that we're making sure that our hr people our our talent and learning people are taken care of as well because they're under enormous timelines right now to turn around content and information quickly uh and and it's going to be a stress on all of them so stress relief is going to be part of of all this but um yeah we're we're going into uncharted waters after this to know what that new normal is but again whether it's happening at home or happening at work, the two have become so mixed now with all of this remote work and with all this transition that I think businesses will take a different approach uh, just on calls. You know, we're all now saying we're a lot more tolerant of babies crying or dogs barking or kids coming in. Um, You know, I think about that BBC video where that, that, guy was doing it and the whole family came in it was just so laughable but i think there's i I think it's less comedy now as it is more empathetic response yeah i think that's i think that's spot on i think the 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 more we're becoming more human as a part of this hopefully and that that focus that's sort of been in the background of a lot of talent development and learning work on workplace culture and mindfulness um yeah, I think I agree with you. It becomes a lot more of the fabric of what we do as learning as organizations and less as a nice to have because because of where we're at and the need for us to see one another as human beings who are we're all dealing with uh, with some challenges. It's business, of course. There's we're all here to do a job. But um, but honestly, it's got to be we've got to be able to treat people um, yeah. fairly and give them the tools they need to be successful, not just from a skill point of view, but from a emotional and, and social point of view as well. Um, I want to close out our conversation and, and talk about, uh, I don't want to call it opportunities cause it feels like it's, uh, <clears throat> it's sort of like we're, we're looking at a, a very difficult situation and, and saying that, you know, Hey, let's, it's time to take advantage of it. But I think what open, there's an openness now in organizations to mm-hmm. do things a little bit differently. Where do you see the things that perhaps were not as open before, uh, from a, a, a learning and development point of view that, folks who are in those roles can kind of jump in and say, hey, you know what, that thing that we've been talking about for a long time, now is the time for us to really put our foot on the gas here and, and, and do more. And are there things that we should take off, take our foot off the accelerator on because it's just not the time for it? Yeah, I, I think one, um, the communication is going to change. Uh, you know, kind of going back, I, the, the phrase I'm hearing more and more is be authentic. Um, I think we're also going to look at 
in the uh, review or the, the I don't want to use that term, but as we look back at what we had to take care of to do what we did, there's going to be a lot of review of process and, and much like we talked about, you know, why were things done a certain way? And so I think efficiencies are going to change a lot. Um, when we're looking at technology for the learning suites, uh, I think the understanding of what it is in your organization, how do you do things currently? And that's that's the one thing I've, I've always said that organizations mess up on is when they try and buy technology and just say, okay, make it work and do what we are already doing just with technology. Process review, process understanding how your operation works to then make the better process technology. Now, in this new world of communication too, I hope to see other um, suppliers and, and uh, talking more on terms of what are the business problems you're trying to solve, not get into a feature function knockoff. It's how are you, you doing today? How can we help you? What is the, the challenge that you're wanting to do? And I hope that there's a movement away from these line item RFPs to more of a, a business decision on how we can partner and help. That was one of the things I heard in the roundtable just recently was organizations are are kind of overwhelmed right now by everybody saying, we got free stuff to help you. We got free stuff to help you. And that's great. And we all are providing that. And I think we're all kind of pitching in. But there's also this point where people are saying, but I need to understand how I can change things. How, what's the strategies? What are you seeing as best practices? That's what I love about my role is I actually help transition between organizations. I see organizations are doing things amazing. I see others that are struggling and helping to share and, and work with them as a trusted advisor and support. I think you're going to see a lot more of that taking off. And I hope so, because I hope there's an openness and understanding that some of the walls and barriers that we put up were okay. I mean, they were there for a reason, but we see that after this whole event, it's, it's more of just an hindrance to being able to progress. Well, Brent Colescott, thank you so much for taking time today and, and best wishes to you and your family and continued health and, and well-being. And uh, especially thank you to Skillsoft and Sum Total for, for being a part of, of our events and helping to make this happen. So thank you for your time today and thank you for everything you're doing for the community. Thanks. And, and back to you, Mike. Hope all's well at, at your home and uh, hope you do well through this.